Hey everyone, so I have mentioned previously that I was going to be pushing my Sabretooth P67 to the max to see how far this thing can overclock and see what it can do. I did a review on it a few months back, I'll put a link up on the screen to that, you can check it out. But today what this video is about is just pushing this thing as far as it can go with the cooling system that I have. So I'll just go over the specifications. Asus Sabretooth P67, Core i7-2600K with an EK Supreme HF nickel acetyl water block being cooled by this Danger Den triple radiator water box. G-Skill Rip Jaws X 78724CR2 1.6V GTX 560 Ti Twin Frozer 2. The test bed is a micro cool band Shadow 101. Western Digital Caviar Black SATA 3, 1 terabyte storage drive and an OCZ Vertex 2 boot drive. Dynamax Revolution 1250 watt. So I'll just show the max overclock that I got. Now I say it's the maximum overclock. Temperature is the thing that's stopping me from going any further. Heat is my only barrier. Okay, it's very simple to get an overclock like this. It's just a matter of punching in a few digits, increasing your voltage. Absolutely no worries little bit of testing it's taken me minimal time to get this but I just wanted to find the maximum overclock that I could get with the cooling that I have uh, with, the, with the room temperature that I have and I just wanted to show you that overclock and the some benchmark results from it so I'll just quickly show you in CPU-Z okay 5.2 gigahertz 1.57 volts. So these are the benchmarks that I ran 3D Mark 06, 3D Mark Vantage, 3D Mark 11, PC Mark 7, and also Signbench. Now, obviously, most of those benchmarks are actually 3D benchmarks, but you can still see the CPU results in those benchmark results. So make sure you look at the CPU results. So I was pretty happy to be able to get those results. Quite similar results to what I managed to get with the Asus P8 P67 Evo that I had recently as well. I'll put a link up on the screen to an overclocking session that I did with that motherboard. Okay, so right now you can see my room temperature there. The top temperature is the coolant temperature and the bottom temperature at 32.3 degrees is my room temperature. Just imagine if my room temperature was 15 degrees cooler. That would mean that my CPU would be approximately 15 degrees cooler. Now 15 degrees is a massive temperature difference when overclocking. Okay, 15 degrees might give me an extra 300 to 500 megahertz increase from where I am now at 5.2 gigahertz. So a lot of people might think that you know I'm running a high-end water cooling system I should be getting better results under water cooling mainly with a water box like the one that I'm running which has triple 360 millimeter radiators dual pumps you know it's an extremely high-end water box but room temperature is something that people just keep forgetting and it has to be taken into account. Obviously there's a lot of other things as well that affect the temperature of your hardware. People don't consider the voltages that you're running, different system configurations and there's one other very important thing that a lot of people don't know. Every single chip to a certain extent is different. Okay so different people will get different overclocks. So one person will be able to get 4.8 gigahertz at say 1.25 volts and another person won't be able to get 4.8 gigahertz at 1.35 volts. So hopefully that clears things up for people and brings about an understanding of why my temperatures are higher than other people's temperatures. Seeing a water box that's so high end 
you would think, maybe think that I could overclock higher. But there's certain limitations of heat transfer through the heat sink. Okay, and I'm reaching those limitations at 5.3 gigahertz. The CPU is actually heating 90 degrees Celsius at 100% load. Okay, that's why I can't go further than, than 5.2 gigahertz. But if you look at my coolant temperature, it's still only one degree above the actual room temperature. So that shows that the water box is under absolutely minimal load. It's under no load almost. So it's obviously not the water box that's being that's limiting the overclock. To use the full capabilities of this water box, you'd need to run it on a system with you know multiple graphics cards up to quad GPUs. You'd have to be cooling the CPU, the memory, the motherboard, even dual CPUs. Okay, so that is where this water box would be in its element. So what I'm saying is that I could actually get the same temperature results with a single triple radiator and a single pump. You could really spend a fraction of what I've spent on this water box and you know get the same temperature results, the same overclocking results. Make sure you check out the video that I linked you to de detailing this water box for more information on what I actually built this water box for. I will probably have more videos like this in the future when I do over, more overclocking sessions on this platform if I manage to break these records and push further. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. Thanks everyone.